الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد in our previous class we're discussing what the author here mentioned حفظه الله تعالى about the apparent signs indicating the soundness of the heart and that it is good and that it is firm and strong and healthy, healthy with sincere faith and he mentioned some benefits summarized from the work of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala which is entitled Al-Da'a and he mentioned in that work six signs six signs indicating the sound heart and the good health and strength of the heart the health well-being and strength of of the heart and the first one that he mentioned uh, and the first one that he mentioned hafizahullah uh, ta'ala was Al-Mu'adhabatu ala dhikrillah Al-Mu'adhabatu ala dhikrillahi azza wa jal To be in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And uh, to remember Allah often in every circumstance and in every situation And we had read, we had read that which the author he mentioned with regards to this sign in our previous class And this evening, bi'idhni lahi ta'ala We'll take some benefits with regards to the issue of a dhikr, dhikr Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the issue of a dhikr, dhikr Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal so we see that by the remembrance of Allah the legislated remembrance that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hearts they, they come alive the hearts they come alive and they find peace and tranquility and they find ease and contentment and happiness and it has been collected by Bukhari from the Haditha Abi Musa radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ That the parable or the example of the one who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember him is that of the living and the dead is that of the living and the dead in our previous classes we have discussed this narration and other evidences from the book and the sunnah related to this narration we have seen a number of uh, beneficial details with regards to that alhamdulillah but also in sahih muslim another wording of the same narration has come and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said mathal al-bayt alladhi yuthkaru allah fihi wal bayt alladhi la yuthkaru allah fihi mathal al-hayy wal mayt the parable or the example of the home where allah is mentioned and the home where allah is not mentioned is that of the living and the dead is that of the living and the dead so the one who remembers Allah he is alive in this manner and he comes to life in this manner he will find happiness and joy in this manner and the one who is negligent with regards to that he will die accordingly and his heart will die accordingly and he will find grief and, and sorrow grief and sorrow and heartache and problems and stress and anxiety accordingly and likewise the homes as well and likewise the homes as well so a person he will begin with his self establishing the religion property in his own life inwardly and outwardly seeking knowledge and hoping to benefit from the knowledge and striving to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner prescribed and then cultivating after that his family and his household upon that way in this manner the house will come to life it will come to life and it will be good and there will be blessing in the home between the spouses and likewise between the siblings and then likewise between the parents and, and the children, the house will come to life. It doesn't necessarily mean that there will never be any problems or there will never be any difficulties that arise in the home, but it will be few or be minimized or be taken care of and handled in the easiest and the best manner without making things worse and more severe, without making things worse and more severe. This is all from the benefit of the remembrance of Allah, Azza wa Jal. Whenever it is understood correctly and performed properly and established in the manner legislated and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our previous class, we had mentioned a number of works from Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala where he had discussed the issue of the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. From the best of them and most important with regards to the issue of dhikr wal adhkar, dhikr wal adhkar is the work al-wabil al-sayyib, wa rafi' al-karim al-tayyib, wa rafi' al-karim al-tayyib. This work here is all about the adhkar. It's all about the adhkar in the morning and the evening and all throughout the day in the different circumstances and situation and situations verifying that which is authentic from that and mentioning great benefits and rulings derived from that. And in the beginning he has an introduction and he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala that dhikr has more than 100 benefits. 
It has more than 100 benefits. And then he went to count them one by one, and he reached more than 70. More than 70, just in the introduction, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And likewise, he has another work called Madarij al sarikin which is the interpretation of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. It's in four large volumes. And in that is the, sta the station and the status of a dhikr. And he mentioned great benefits with regards to the dhikr and the ruling of the dhikr and how it's understood in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of, of the Salaf. And also he had another work that's all about the rulings related to sending the Salah and the Salam. Sending the Salah and the Salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is it's entitled Jala al Afham. Jala al Afham. And uh, these works here are very beneficial for the issues that they're discussing, but this topic here was clarified in great detail in these works. And many benefits uh, are mentioned, and I have summarized. I've summarized a number of them, and we take them this evening, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Beginning with uh, what he mentioned in regards to these narrations that have preceded. And as I mentioned before, he began one by one clarifying the benefits of dhikr. And he reached number 16. He says, As-sadisa ashra, annuhu yurithu hayat al-qalb. وَسَّمِعْتُ شَيْخَ الْإِسْلَامِ بِبِنَّ تَيْمِيَةً يَقُولُ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهِ الذِّكْرُ لِلْقَلْبِ مِثْلُ الْمَاءِ لِلْسَّمَكِ فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ حَالُ السَّمَكِ إِذَا ثَرَقَ الْمَاءِ He said that the 16th benefit of the dhikr of Allah is that it brings about the life of the heart. And I heard Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahu Allah ta'ala saying that the dhikr for the heart is like the water for the fish. So what condition will the fish be in if it's taken out of the water? If it's taken out of the water. We discussed this uh, statement in our previous classes likewise and we have seen from the benefits of that is that the fish when it's taken out of water it will die but it doesn't die automatically rather it's over a period and if someone was to place the fish back in the water even after it had weakened even to a great extent many times it will be revived and come back to life. So the parable of the dhikr of Allah is just that. It's, it, it, brings, it brings life. It brings life. It brings life to the dead heart, to the corrupt soul and the likes like this. So a believer he should strive to learn the dhikr of Allah and to learn about the remembrance of Allah and that which is le legislated from that and to, uh, to apply it in his life in order to have true life. In order to have true life. So now we take the summarization of uh, those benefits that have been mentioned and we begin minha that the dhikr has different types, different aspects, different types, different aspects. From that, number one, dhikru al asma'i wa sifat wa ma'aniha. The first aspect of the dhikr of Allah is to remember His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection and to remember the meanings that they contain likewise. This aspect here is in two parts. Number one, the first part from that is to praise Him. The first part from that is to praise Him with these beautiful names and attributes and to single Him out for that with Tawheed, inwardly and outwardly, inwardly and outwardly, and to call on Him by way of them and to seek His forgiveness and to humble oneself before Him. This is the first aspect of the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal with regards to making the dhikr, remembering His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. Allah, he mentioned in his book, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا That indeed, all of the most beautiful names belong to Allah, so call on Him by way of them. So call on Him by way of them. So to remember Allah's beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection and the, and the meanings that are contained therein. And the meanings that are contained therein. And then to praise and thank and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify Him. To glorify Him in these beautiful names that He has. The, uh, the, those beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection that he has and to single him out, to call on him and to make dua to call on him and to make dua and for whatever supplication what, for whatever you're hoping for from the worldly life or from the hereafter or from the deen and from the dunya you call on Allah Azza wa Jal by the name that is suitable by the name that is suitable if you're seeking forgiveness and hoping for mercy you call on, on him by the names that have that meaning like Al Ghafur or Al Ghafar or like Al-Afu, or al tawab and Al-Rahim, and Al-Rahman, and the likes like this. So you call on him by these names, asking for the forgiveness and the mercy and the pardon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to accept the repentance. And if a person is looking for strength, and he's looking for help and aid, he will call on Allah by the names that are suitable. Al-Qawi, Al-Aziz, Al-Nasir, subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling on him by these names, 
and hoping for Allah to respond accordingly, accordingly. And likewise, if a person is hoping for some good or some blessing or some the bestowment of of any good of this life and the hereafter, you'll call on Allah by the names that are suitable, like Al Karim and Al Mannan and Al Wahhab and the likes like this. And he'll call on Allah by these names and request what he's requesting and remembering the majesty and the bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal and being humble before him. And being humble before him. The second aspect of remembering Allah's beautiful names and attributes and their meanings. الاخبار عن الله بأحكام أسمائه نحو قولك الله يسمع أسوات عباده ويرى حركاتهم لا تخفى عليه خافية من أعمالهم وهو أرحم بهم من أبائهم وأمهاتهم وهو على كل شيء قدير وقد حاط بكل شيء علم ونحو ذلك يعني the second aspect is to mention uh, these beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection uh, to mention Allah by way of them by remembering the rulings that are derived from them meaning that Allah he is as sami meaning he can hear you wherever you are that Allah he is he is al basir that he can see you wherever you are that Allah he is al alim that he knows everything that you're doing he's aware of all things la takhfa alayhi khafiya nothing is hidden from him alimun bi dhati as sudur alamul ghuyub alimul ghaybi wa shahada you remember the these beautiful names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and also remember the rulings that are understood from that. That Allah, He sees you where you're at. You cannot hide from Him. That Allah, He knows your circumstance and your situation. You cannot hide from Him. That Allah, He hears you. You cannot whisper. You cannot whisper and expect or think that Allah, He is unaware of what you're doing or what you're saying. Rather, He knows that which is in the hearts and even that which is more hidden, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is hidden from him. And then you remember likewise that Allah he is ar rauf Ar-Rahim. He is the most kind and He is the most merciful for those who take a path to His mercy. Allah He is more merciful than our mothers and our fathers. He is the most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, Allah He has the ability to do all things and has encompassed all things in knowledge. So by remembering His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection and likewise the meanings of those names and those attributes also one will remember the rulings that are derived from there because this requires for him to act accordingly because this requires for him to act accordingly the one who learns about Allah in this, in this manner learning about the rububiyya of Allah and the supreme authority and command of Allah and the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is perfect and likewise learning about his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection that he's alive and never dies and he's powerful and never weak subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not get sleepy or tired and he feeds and he's not fed he does not need anything al ghani al hamid subhanahu wa ta'ala now this requires for a person to act upon that knowledge and to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obedience to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obedience in this manner, this knowledge will benefit. It's been connected by Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'in isma, mi'atan illa wahida, man ahsaha dakhala al-jannah. That indeed Allah, he has 99 names, 100 minus 1. Whoever makes al-ihsa of these names, then he will enter paradise. Man ahsaha dakhala al-jannah. The people of knowledge, they mention, man ahsaha ay man ta'allamaha, the one who learns them. وَحَافِظَهَا And he memorized them. وَتَفَقَّهَا فِي مَعَانِيهَا And he strives to understand the meanings. The, the meanings. وَعَمِلَ بِمُقْتَضَاهَا And he acts according to what that requires and necessitates. دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ He will enter paradise. He will enter paradise. So it's not just simple memorization and information that is gathered that is gathered in the heart or in the breast, but rather it is knowledge that is beneficial. Revelation is knowledge of the, the most important and the greatest thing, the knowledge of the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one will learn about these beautiful names and attributes and he'll memorize them. He'll memorize them, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, and likewise he'll strive to gain an understanding of the meanings and the rulings that are derived from that and what those names and attributes require from him and necessitate in creed and belief and in application and in application. So therefore he will comply to that in this manner, he will be admitted into paradise by learning about Allah Azza wa Jalla and his Tawheed and fulfilling that right. And fulfilling that right and living upon that knowledge and application in his life daily. And application in his life daily. So this is the, the second aspect of remembering or mentioning the beautiful names and the lofty attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their meanings and their meanings. So the first aspect was praising Allah and making the Tawheed and calling on Him and seeking His forgiveness and supplicating to Him humbly. And uh, the second aspect 
was by mentioning the rulings that are derived from that. That Allah, He can hear you. That Allah, He can see you. That Allah, He is aware of wherever you are. That Allah, He is the most forgiving and merciful for those who take a path to His forgiveness and mercy. That Allah, He is the most severe in punishment for those who disregard His commandments and violate His prohibitions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That nothing is hidden from Him and everything is easy for Him. And that He knows everything that will happen and it's written with Him before it was even brought into existence. And uh, nothing is difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will help you and aid you and answer your call if you obey Him and respond to His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in obedience. In, in obedience. So the second aspect is dhikru ahkamihi wa amrihi wa nahihi wal halali wal haram. The second aspect of the dhikr of Allah, dhikru ahkamihi wa amrihi wa nahihi wal halali wal haram. From the aspects of remembering Allah is to remember His rulings. Meaning to remember his legislation, to remember his commandments, and to remember his prohibitions, to remember the halal and the haram, that which is permissible and that which is impermissible. This is from the greatest remembrance of Allah Azza wa and the most beneficial, to remember the legislation of Allah, to remember the commands of Allah, and that Allah, he only commands and orders that which is pleasing to him, and that those who comply to his commandments, he'll be pleased with them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll be pleased with them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to also go back to the previous issue about the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla, that he's as shakur, he is the most thankful. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he will show thanks for the littlest of deeds and pardon the greatest of sin. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will show thanks for the littlest of deeds and pardon the greatest of sins. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghafoor and shakur. These two names, they come together in the book and a number and a number of verses. Innuhu ghafoor and shakur. Then indeed he's the most forgiving and also the most thankful, meaning he will pardon and forgive great sin. Great sin for those who repent to him and he will show thanks and appreciation for the, the littlest of deeds that are done sincerely for his sake and according to his legislation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to remember the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, that these commands are pleasing to him. And the one who abides by them will obtain the pleasure of Allah. It has been collected by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Anas radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna allaha layarda layarda an al-abdi an yakul al-aklata fi yahmaduhu alayha wa yashrab sharbata fi yahmaduhu alayha that indeed Allah he will be pleased he'll be pleased with the slave if he eats some food and then he praises and thanks Allah for it and if he drinks a drink he'll praise and thank Allah for it so this is something that Allah he's providing for us He's providing the food and drink for us. But if whenever we take from His provision, we remember Him and thank Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and single Him out with that, that He is the provider and He is the one who has bestowed this favor and blessing upon us, this food that we partake in that is delicious and that we enjoy and that is nourishing and good for our health and our well-being, that we remember Allah. Upon that, He'll be pleased with us. He'll be pleased with us. So how about if you sincerely worship Him and comply to Him and strive against your soul to obey Him in public and in private? And public and in private, no doubt, He'll be pleased with you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what uh, a believer is hoping for. What is one min Allahi akbar, and the pleasure of Allah is the greatest thing. The greatest thing that one he will hope for. So from the means of that is to remember his ahkam, al-ahkam al shariya the legislative rulings, and, he, and his commandments and prohibitions, and the halal and the haram, and the halal and and the haram. So this is from the, the most beneficial, from the most beneficial aspects of remembering Allah, of remembering Allah. Rather, remembering His beautiful names and attributes, if it does not benefit a person to remember those commandments and abide by them, and to remember those prohibitions and to avoid them and fear Allah with regards to that, then that remembrance is, is weak. That remembrance is weak and deficient in his heart, in his heart. This aspect here has three points. This aspect here has three points. The first one, al bi Allah amara bi kada and كذا ويحب كذا ويرضاه ويكره كذا ويأباه ونحو ذلك ويحب كذا ويرضاه ويكره كذا ويأباه ونحو ذلك The first aspect is to talk about, to mention that Allah, He has ordered this and that Allah, He has forbade that and that Allah, He loves this and He's pleased with that and that Allah, He does not like this and He despises and rejects that. You need to remember this. So you remember these rulings? You remember the commandments and prohibitions, you remember the halal and the haram, you remember and you speak about that. Allah He has ordered this. Allah He has made this an obligation. This is something that's recommended, it's pleasing to Allah. This is something that's forbidden, it's not allowed, it's haram. This is something displeasing to Allah. This issue here is disliked. It's preferable to avoid it. 
It's preferable to avoid it. Oh, this, these affairs here, these are unlawful and permissible. They're from the mubahat. So to remember the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are derived from these affairs and to remember that Allah is pleased with this affair and for those who partake in it and abide by it and he dislikes these affairs and he's displeased and angry with those who violate them and indulge in them and perpetrate those limits. Who violate these limits, indulge in them and perpetrate these limits. All of this is from the dhikr of Allah Azawajal. All of this is from the dhikr of Allah Azawajal. The second aspect here, dhikrullahi inda amrihi wal mubadaratu ila al imtithali wal qiyami bihi wa dhikruhu inda nahihi wa ijtinabuhu the second aspect here of remembering Allah, meaning remembering the legislation and the law and the limits and regulations of Allah, the halal and the haram, the commandments and prohibitions, is to remember Allah upon His commandment. To remember Allah upon remembering the commandment. To remember Allah upon remembering the commandment. To remember Allah upon remembering the commandment and to hasten to comply to it and to establish it in the proper manner to hasten to comply to it and establish it in the proper manner and to in the proper manner and to remember Allah upon remembering the prohibition to remember Allah upon remembering the prohibition and then to strive to avoid it to turn away from it and to leave it and to uh, distance oneself from it so one he will remember these commandments and prohibitions and then he will and then he will remember Allah upon that and then he'll remember Allah upon that. And then he will strive to implement those commandments and obligations, hoping for the reward of Allah. Striving to please Allah and seek His pleasure. And upon remembering those prohibitions, then he will avoid them. He will avoid them. He will remember Allah and remember the grace and mercy of Allah. And that those who perform those commandments, they will have the aid and the help of Allah and the pleasure of Allah. And uh, Allah will benefit them in this life and the hereafter and save them from much harm and danger. And He will grant them success and honor them in this world and the next. In this world and the next. And as for those who fall short in performing that, then they will earn the anger of Allah. And they will expose themselves to the punishment of Allah. And likewise, those who violate those prohibitions those who violate those prohibitions. So one who remember that the prayer is an obligation, for example, he'll wake up upon hearing the alarm clock, the fajr, for example, and then he must remember Allah and the reward of Allah and the promise of Allah with regards to performing that, that commandment and then fight against his soul and get those heavy blankets off of him and raise his heavy head off of the pillow and stand up and purify himself and uh, make his way to the prayer and make his way to the prayer and to, and to fear Allah uh, upon falling short in that or neglecting that neglecting that so to remember these commandments and then to remember Allah upon these commandments to remember these commandments and then to remember Allah upon these commandments Ibn Qayyim he mentioned here on this point Rahimahullah and that which has preceded is summarized but this here is a quote from him he mentioned about this particular issue he says Rahimahullah فَذِكْرُ أَمْرِهِ وَنَهِهِ شَيْءٌ وَذِكْرُهُ عِنْدَ أَمْرِهِ وَنَهِهِ شَيْءٌ آخر. So to remember the commands of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah is one thing. But to remember Allah upon remembering the commandments and the prohibitions is another thing. Is another thing. Because some people, they will remember the commandments. This is an obligation and then he will neglect that. He will neglect that because of a weakness of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because of a weakness of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal and hoping for his reward. Or a person, he will remember the prohibition and know that it's forbidden. And then because of a weakness in his faith, from the corruption of his soul and deficiency of his heart, he will advance upon that anyways. He will advance upon that anyway. He will perpetrate that anyways. He will perpetrate that anyway. So to remember the commandments and prohibitions is one thing and then to remember Allah upon that remembrance is another. So to remember Allah upon remembering the commandments means to strive to comply to them and to implement them properly. And to remember Allah upon remembering the prohibition is to avoid them and stay away from them is to avoid them and stay away from them. All of this will be done Iman and Wahdi Saba. Iman and Wahdi Saba out of sincere faith and belief in Allah in the last day while hoping for the reward. While hoping for the reward. And this brings us to the third point uh, from this issue. Dhikrullahi athna'a al-qiyami bi amrihi wa iman and wahdi saba. Athna'a al-qiyama bi amrihi iman and wahdi saba wa anna al-thawaba wal qurba ala hasabi Adhikr, So the third point here is to remember Allah during establishing His commandments. To remember Allah while establishing His commandments. To remember Allah 
while establishing his commandments out of sincere faith while hoping for the reward. Because maybe a person he will remember the obligation. Maybe a person he will remember the command. And then also he will remember Allah and establish that command. And then whenever he begins to establish that command, he will fall heedless and negligent and think nothing except of the worldly life. For example, those who are given success to pray. The devil could not turn him away from the salah, could not cause him to be heedless about the command of the obligatory prayers. He will remember the obligation of prayer. And likewise, the devil could not turn him away to be negligent with regards to that. He will remember Allah upon that and he will strive to establish that obligatory prayer. When does the devil take hold and when does his whispers become strong? Once he enters into that obligation. Once he enters into that obligation, so maybe he will not forget the commandment, nor will he forget to implement and apply it, but while he's performing it, he falls weak in that. He falls weak in that, and he's thinking about the worldly life, or he's heedless about the action that he's performing, thinking about the dunya, thinking about the dunya. So one he has to remember Allah at this time likewise, and strive upon that remembrance, and strive upon that remembrance, hoping for the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal, fearing the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal, worshiping out of sincere devotion and love and servitude. Worshipping out of sincere devotion, love, and servitude with hope and with fear. And this is the level here of Al-Ihsan. This is the level here of Al-Ihsan. Whenever a person, he will worship Allah in the manner prescribed. He will worship Allah in the manner prescribed. And he will not be heedless. And he will not be forgetful. And he will not be negligent while he's performing the actions. While he's performing the actions. There's a narration corrected by Tirmidhi from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Udu Allah, Udru Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba that you must call on Allah while you have certainty he will respond wa'lamu anna Allah la yastajibu du'aan min qalbin ghafilin lah and you must know that Allah he does not respond to the supplication of a heart that is heedless and preoccupied that is heedless and preoccupied. So we should not be heedless and preoccupied with the worldly life while we're engaged in performing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While we're engaged in actions of worship, hoping to draw near to Him. If we expect to have a reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla, we must be alive. We must be alive with the remembrance of Allah, with the dhikr of Allah, hoping for the reward of Allah, fearing the punishment of Allah, putting one's faith and trust and reliance in Allah. And the means to do this is to seek His help. To seek the help of Allah to worship Him good. To seek the help of Allah to worship Him good. It has come in uh, the Musnad of Imam Ahmed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to his companions, Would you like to make ijtihad fi dua? Would you like to make al ijtihad atuhibbun and tajtahidu fi dua? Would you like to make, strive hard to make dua? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, you say, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. You say, Oh Allah, help me to remember you. Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Oh Allah, help me to remember you and to show thanks to you and to worship you in a good manner. In a good manner. So just as we strive in the worldly affairs to gain a dollar or to achieve whatever we hope to achieve in this worldly life, and we will seek the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we remember Allah upon that, going throughout the day to get our money, to get our job, or to go through the land, to go through the streets, which is something lawful and good. This is what is required. You seek the provision of Allah, seeking the help and the aid from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and remembering Him, Tabarakah wa Ta'ala, but in that same manner, even more emphasized whenever we are establishing the rights of Al-Islam and the actions of worship, to seek the help of Allah to do it good and not be heedless. To seek the help of Allah, to do it good and to not be heedless. The second point here is anna thawaba wal qurba min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala hasbi dhikrihi ala hasbi dhikrihi that the reward the good reward and nearness to Allah azza wa jalla is according to how to how much one remembers Allah azza wa jalla according to how much Allah how much one remembers Allah azza wa jalla there is narrations indicating this some of the people of knowledge mentioned that the change uh, uh, the chain has weakness in it. Any of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was asked about the people in jihad, the people in salah, the people performing the fast, so on and so forth. And every time he would say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Akhtaruhum dhikran lillah. Who, was the, who, who, was, who has the greatest reward from the people fasting? Who has the greatest reward from the people in prayer? Who has the greatest reward from the people in jihad? And each time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say, Akhtaruhum dhikran lillahi Azza wa Jalla. Those who, the one who remembers Allah the most. So the one who has the greatest reward 
in the salah is the one who remembers Allah most. The one who has the greatest reward in Ramadan while fasting is the one who remembers Allah most. And during that action, the one who has the greatest reward in seeking knowledge is the one who remembers Allah the most during that. During that. So maybe two people, they'll be in the same prayer even next to each other, but the reward that they obtain is different like the distance uh, uh, is different like the distance of the heavens and the earth or the, or the east and the west. One of them he has a great reward because of how much he's striving to remember Allah and show thanks and another he has a lesser reward because he was heedless and that and couldn't get the dunya off of his mind and couldn't get the dunya off of his mind. So the reward is according to how well one remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, Ibn Qayyim in the same work uh, he, he mentioned Rahimahullah ta'ala principle a principle, and that, that's, uh, that's what we're discussing. That the, the reward and the recompense is according to how much one remembers Allah. So the one who remembers Allah more during a particular action of worship, he will have a greater reward. He will have a greater reward. He will have a greater, a greater reward. So we have to strive to perfect the worship for the sake of Allah and to be truthful in that. To be truthful in that. If a person, he is uh, doing, for example, a worldly job. He's doing a, a worldly job. And he's doing that while he's thinking about his wife, or he's thinking about uh, what he's going to do after work, or he's thinking about what he's going to say to so-and-so. Even if, for example, he's just doing some worldly cleaning up, for example, and, but he's not paying attention. His mind is not there. His mind is not there. The, the, jo the job that he's going to do is going to be deficient. He's not going to be able to do the job properly because, because he's not focused. His mind is not there. He's thinking about something else. He's thinking about something else. He's doing his job, but he's not doing it to the best of his ability. And he's not really honest in doing that. Honest in doing that. He could wash the tables much better than that, but because he's thinking about something, he just wipes them down and keeps going. And keeps going. So this is the example uh, of a person who's not, uh, he's not honest or he has little integrity in performing his deeds. In performing his deeds. But if he knows that the boss is standing there at the counter, how is he going to wash them now? Uh, he's going to forget all about the dunya, or what he's going to say to so-and-so, and he's going to watch them good, because he knows that he's being observed. He knows that he's being observed. So, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثْلُ الْعَالَى And Allah, for Allah is the greatest, is the greatest example. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can see you wherever you are. He knows about you, whatever you're doing. You can't hide from Him at all. You can't go under the covers. You can't, there's nowhere to go. Allah is Al-Wahid Al-Qahar. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khalaq Al-Alim. Allahu Akbar. Al-Khalaq Al-Alim. He's the all-knowing creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's created everything. He's the one and only, irresistible. You cannot hide from him. You are going to go back to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees you wherever you are. So therefore, you have to remember that. Remember these names, remember these attributes, and then act upon that properly, especially while performing the actions of worship. So he sees you whenever you're standing in prayer. He sees you whenever you're prostrating. So we should be shy that he will see us while we're standing in prayer for him, but we're not thinking about him. Whether we're thinking about the creation that was created for us to remember him, to created for us to help us remember him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise in sujood. Likewise, uh, likewise in, in sujood. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whenever he was asked about uh, about uh, whenever he was asked sallallahu alaihi wasallam about al ihsan about al ihsan the highest level of the of the deen, he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "In ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarahu, fa illam tukun tarahu, fa inna hu yaraka." That you worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you're not able to see Him, then you know that He sees you. Then you know that He sees you. So you worship Allah as if you see Him, meaning seeing Him not with the eyes, with the heart. Not with the eyes, with the heart. Seeing Him by the first aspect. By knowing Him by His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. By knowing Him by His Lordship and authority and command. By knowing Him by His signs and His creation and His signs and His law and legislation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and then worshiping Him upon that knowledge. And the worshiping Him upon that knowledge in this manner, the worship will be performed precisely. The worship will be, will be, will be performed in the best manner. And that's what Al-Ihsan is. Al-Ihsan yani al-Ijada wal itqan to perform something in the best manner. To perform something in the best manner, inwardly and outwardly. To worship Allah as if you see Him. As if you see Him. And if you do not see Him, then you know that He sees you. Then you know that He sees you. And if you do not see Him, then you know that see, He sees you. So the level of Al-Ihsan, perfecting the worship of Allah Azza wa is two. It's two stages. It's two stages. The first stage. Uh, is the first stage mentioned in here in the narration is called uh, is called al-mushahada 
It's called Masha'al Mushahada. You worship Allah as if you see Him, meaning with your heart. You're witnessing His authority and command and power, and His mercy and His grace and His knowledge, and that He has the ability to do all things, that nothing is hidden from Him, that He is above His throne in a manner befitting His majesty, disposing the affairs of His creation according to His wisdom. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, providing for this one and sustaining that one and raising this one and lowering that one and causing this one to die and giving this one life. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and bringing this one out of poverty and, and granting him provision, honoring this one and disgracing that one. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, you remember these affairs and you worship Allah upon that knowledge as if you see him. This is called a mushahada. And uh, the, the, the level lower than that is called a muraqaba. And the muraqaba is the path to a mushahada. That you know that Allah, He can see you. That you know you, that Allah, He can see you. Meaning that you're aware. And you're observing the fact that Allah, He sees you. That Allah, He sees you. So if you cannot reach the level to where you worship Him as if you see Him, then you know that He sees you. Then He know that He sees you and you worship Him upon that. Similar in comparison to the one who knows that his boss is watching. He knows that his boss is watching. So also, Barakallah Fikum, there's a benefit here. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu. Did you worship Allah as if you see Him? This is the high level. This is a high level. May Allah grant us the success to reach that and to live upon that and die upon that. And, and all of the Muslims. But before that level, there's the level that there's a lower level, but it's still a high level. And if you're not able to see him, then you know that he sees you. So that's how you worship him. But also here, the means to reach that level is to realize uh, a subtle meaning in this statement. A subtle meaning in this statement. And if you're not able to worship him like you see him, then indeed he sees you. Then indeed he sees you. What do you find here? Huh? Nam? Nam. That he sees you. But there's a, a subtle, there's a subtle meaning here that will carry you, that will drive you to, uh, to, to comply. That will drive you to worship him like that. Huh? If you tell your son, for example, I see you. Don't think you can hide from me. I see you. Huh? It's a threat. It's a threat. It's a threat. There's a threat there. If you don't see him, and if you cannot reach this high level, or you worship him as if you see him, then you must know that he sees you. You must know that he sees you. Meaning that you need to worship Allah knowing that he sees you. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a hint of a, of a threat there that Allah, He sees you. So you should be afraid of Him. That you need takhweef with tahdeed. You need that you should be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that manner, by being afraid of Allah azza wa jal, now a person, he will strive to perfect the worship and to implement the commandment in the best manner and to strive against his, his soul to do that and to avoid the prohibitions entirely and, and to work hard, to work hard upon that path. And that will carry him to the next level. That will carry him to the next level. So by fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the means to establish the worship properly. By fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the means to establish the worship properly. Fearing Allah and hoping for His reward. All at the same time. All at, at the same time. If we go back briefly to, if we go back briefly to the, remembering the, the, the rulings of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the point that he made about the difference between remembering the command of Allah and the prohibition of Allah and remembering Allah upon the commandment and the prohibition. Upon the commandment and the prohibition. There was another quote I had, uh, I had written down from Ibn Qayyim. He says here about this point now. He says, فَهَذَا ذِكْرُهُ هُوَ الْفِقْهُ الْأَكْبَرِ هُوَ الْفِقْهُ الْأَكْبَرِ this, this here, remembering Allah upon remembering the command of Allah and remembering Allah upon remembering the prohibition of Allah, meaning in the application of that, he said, this remembrance here is Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar. This is the major understanding. The major understanding. And the application of that knowledge. The application of that knowledge and, and that remembrance. The application of that knowledge and the remembrance. The third aspect of a dhikr uh, is Dhikr Al-Alai Wal-Na'mai Wal-Ihsani Wal-Ayadi To remember the favors and bounties and blessings of Allah Azza wa Jalla and all the good that He has done. And all the good that He has done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, فَاذْكُرُوا أَلَىٰ أَلَّهِ لَعَلَكُمْ تُفْرِحُونَ That you must remember the favors and bounties of Allah in order to, in order to be successful. That you must re remember, you must remember the favors and bounties of Allah in order to be successful. The people of knowledge, they mentioned success at falah, 
الفلاح which means success هو الفوز بالمرغوب والنجاة من المرغوب الفلاح it means success this means to obtain everything that one desires and to be safe from everything one is afraid of to be safe from everything that one is afraid of so الفلاح means to be admitted into paradise and to be safe from the hellfire Everyone that one desires is to be admitted into paradise and to not be taken into account that his sins will be forgiven and pardoned and overlooked and uh, that he will see Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Jannah. That he will see Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Jannah and that he'll be safe from the hellfire and the punishment and the accountability. So that is uh, called Al Falah. And Allah is mentioning here, Fathkuru Allah Allahi. La'alakum tufrihun. That you must remember the bounties and favors of Allah in order for you to be successful. After this, we have uh, three more points to close. And another aspect of the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is how it occurs. And I summarize briefly because we're waiting for the aqamah. The, the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it occurs on the tongue and with the heart. It recurs on the tongue and with the heart. On the tongue and with the heart. So the highest level is whenever it is done with the heart and the, and the tongue together. When it's done with the heart and the tongue together. A person who remembers Allah, he will say Allahu Akbar and his heart will magnify Allah. He will say, Subhanallah, and his heart will glorify Allah. He will say, La ilaha illallah, and his heart will deify Allah, and will love Allah, and will venerate Allah. He will remember Allah Azza wa Jal with his tongue and with his heart. If he recites the, the greatest remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is the Noble Qur'an. The, the, the greatest dhikr is the Noble Qur'an. To remember the Allah by reciting his words, and by pondering and reflecting over the meanings with the heart. So whatever remembrance that one does from the aspects that have preceded, he would do that with the tongue and with the heart. In this manner, the, the dhikr will bring about fruits and great benefit and great happiness and joy. And great happiness and joy. A, low, a level lower than that is to remember Allah with the heart and not the tongue. Is to remember Allah with the heart and not the tongue. And the lowest level is to remember Allah with the tongue and not the heart. To remember Allah with the tongue alone, with the tongue alone. Ibn Qayyim, he clarified, Rahimah that uh, the, 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 the difference between the two is that the remembrance with the heart, it brings about knowledge and reverence and fear and veneration. It brings about humbleness and trust and reliance. It causes the heart to move, to move, uh, uh, hoping for the reward of Allah, to fear Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will bring great fruits of submission and surrender and trust and reliance, so on and so forth. But as for the remembrance of the tongue alone, it will almost not do that whatsoever. And if it does anything from that, if it moves the heart whatsoever, it will be very few and the fruits will be little and weak. And the fruits, they will be little and, uh, and they will be weak. They will be little and they will, they will be weak. So a person, he will remember Allah with his tongue and with his heart. And this is the best manner. But even if he's tired or he's not able to move his tongue, he will remember Allah with his with his heart and there's great reward and benefit with regards to that and one should be cautious from remembering Allah with his tongue only simple lip service and being ne negligent and heedless with the heart and preoccupied with the creation of Allah with the creation of Allah from the worst thing that one could do is to remember Allah while the heart is hoping for the reward from the creation to remember Allah doing actions of worship actions that are pleasing to Allah outwardly Outwardly, while the heart is turning to the creation with hope and with, uh, with hope to be seen or to be praised or to be liked or to be accepted or to be accepted. From here we've seen that statement of Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah inna akbaha ragba and tutlab dunya bi amal al-akhirah that indeed the worst desire one can have is that uh, the worldly life would be sought by the deeds of the hereafter, by the deeds of the hereafter. So in any case, this is from the signs that the heart is sound, that the heart is alive, and that the heart is good and healthy. That a person who remember Allah often. And this is how the remembrance occurs. This is how the remembrance occurs. They remember His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection and the ways that are ready to that by calling on Him and seeking His forgiveness and, hum and being humble before Him. And likewise, uh, speaking about that and the rulings that are derived from that as well as remembering those rulings and that legislation and the commandments and prohibitions and then remembering Allah upon that and applying that and complying properly. And then remembering Allah uh, during the application of that, hoping for the reward, fearing the punishment with trust and reliance, with love, hope, and fear, and sur surrender and submission and servitude, and to remember the favors and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to do that with the heart and the tongue, to do that with the heart and the tongue all throughout the day. From the time a person he wakes up, a person he will wake up upon the remembrance of Allah and all throughout his day, and all throughout his day until he goes to sleep, and he will fall asleep while his tongue is moist. With the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While his tongue is moist, with the remembrance of Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised just that. Allah yazala lisanuka ratban bi dhikrillah. That your tongue should uh, always be moist with the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal. And in this manner, performing the obligations and avoiding the prohibitions, they, they become light and they become delightful and they become easy and they become uh, beloved to the heart. But whenever a person is heedless of the remembrance of Allah, performing these commandments and avoiding the prohibitions becomes heavy, becomes heavy and, and difficult. So Allah, He clarified about this, Allah bi qulub. Indeed, by the remembrance of Allah, did the hearts find tranquility. Hada وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم